program. Joining us now are two key members of the Senate Armed Services Committee just back from the Middle East, Republican Lindsey Graham and Democrat Richard Blumenthal. And senators, welcome to both of you. Thanks. The president and, and prime minister will be wrestling with two key questions uh, tomorrow. First, what are their red lines? How far each leader uh, will allow Iran to go before giving up on diplomacy? And how second, uh, and second, how committed is each to a military strike if Iran crosses that red line? Senator Graham, what does President Obama need to say to Prime Minister Netanyahu to reassure him? that I am committed to uh, stopping Iran from getting nuclear we weapon, not only in words, but in deeds, that if necessary, we'll use uh, military force. And they need a common definition of what change, what kind of change would be acceptable on Iran's part. It, meaning the red line, how far they're willing to allow Iran to go. It needs to be a common definition conveyed privately to Iran so they'll know what they need to do. Senator Blumenthal, does President Obama need to go further than he has so far? in reassuring the Israelis? I think that he needs to give a more specific and muscular content to the formulaic expression that's been used again and again and again. All options are on the table to say that containment is not an option, that a nuclear-armed Iran, for all the reasons that he stated so powerfully in the interview that he did recently with Jeff <coughs> Goldberg, is simply unacceptable because it would destabilize the Middle East, it would create access for terrorists to nuclear armaments, and it would make the Middle East a nuclear tinderbox. And that's the kind of passion and specificity that he needs to bring to this conversation now. All right. On the other hand, Senator Blumenthal, does Prime Minister Netanyahu need to give tougher sanctions that have been imposed, uh, an oil embargo by Europe against Iran, uh, tougher measures against Iran's central bank. Does he need to give those more time to work before he launches a unilateral military strike? You know, Israel's interests are its own, just as our interests have to be our own. Our national interest has to be the guiding principle. And the cooperation, we come back from a trip recently, the, Middle East, my impression is that that cooperation, strategic and intelligence, has never been stronger between these two allies. And the Prime Minister of Israel has to recognize that the United States has its own interests, but in this case, they are aligned with Israel's. But, but there is a disagreement here. I mean, there is, Senator Graham, a disagreement at this point about when, how far they should allow Iran to go, and at what point a military strike should be triggered. There's a difference in capability. Uh, as no, but also a difference in their assessment sure, of, the, sure, of the situation. There, there's an intelligence picture difference, but here's what we agree on. We've been talking with Iran for three years. They keep enriching. We've been sanctioning Iran seriously, I think, in an effective way for about the last six months. They keep enriching. They have 3,000 kilograms of lower enriched uranium, one and a half times more than they need to, to make a bomb. So here's the, the situation in Israel. Their military capability is less than ours. There'll come a point where these sites get hardened, and they are being hardened. If they wanted to build a power plant for peaceful purposes, the Iranians are going at it in a very odd way. When you put their rhetoric and their behavior together with, with their nuclear program, if you're Israel, you can't, let, you can't lose control of your own destiny. So that's what the Prime Minister of Israel told us. We will not lose control of our own destiny. We want sanctions to work. We will give them time. But when the Iranians get to the point where our military capability is not sufficient to stop their program, that's the red line for us. And we have a different point militarily than they do, and there's the conflict. And how should that be resolved? Should it be resolved on what the Israeli capabilities are and what they, at the point at which they should, have to strike? We should be talking about or should, they, or should they be willing to rely on the United States? Quickly, we should not be talking about our differences. We should be talking about our commonalities. President's statement on not containing a nuclear armed Iran was great. We should be talking about Iran's behavior, not our differences. And you've got to understand this. The Israeli government and people will not lose control of their own destiny, period. That's the end of the discussion from their point of view. Sanctions could work, have not worked yet, but there'll come a point in time where they will lose control of their destiny militarily, and they're not going to let that happen, and we should acknowledge it and say that's okay with us. So that, in other words, when they say we will no longer have the capability to take out the nuclear problem, we're not going to rely on the U.S., we're going to do it ourselves. We should understand that's a reasonable position for the Israelis to take, and we should support that position and hope we never get there. And hope that, that our assurances will enable them to understand how we will be their ally, how we will 
stop a nuclear-armed Iran, how we will not tolerate it as a matter of our national interest, not Israeli interest. The focus is so much on restraining the Israelis, but it ought to be on making sure that our commonality of interest is served by a strong United States policy that convinces the Iranians that they are crippling their economy, they are brutalizing their people, and the United States at the end of the day is not going to accept a nuclear armed Iran. Let's turn to Afghanistan and the blowback to the burning of several Qurans in that country in the last couple of weeks. In recent days, six U.S. servicemen have been killed by our Afghan <coughs> partners, and the reaction from some leading Republicans and conservatives has been striking. There's some problems what you have to do is say, you know, you're going to have to figure out how to live your own miserable life. It's gotten to the point where why are we there? If this is the end result of us being there, let's get these people out, bring them home, and the hell with the place over there. Senator Graham, are Newt Gingrich and Rush Limbaugh wrong? They're expressing frustration, but I know why we're there. General Allen will be here in two weeks to tell the Congress why and, we're and there. And he's the commander of U.S. forces. He's the in commander. Afghanistan. I spent an hour on the phone with him. Uh, there are 30 million Afghans. It breaks your heart when six soldiers are killed for an inadvertent uh, a burning of a religious document. They left their homes and their families to help the Afghans. But this is not a total picture of what's going on in Afghanistan. We have made progress, and we do have strong allies within Afghanistan. So don't let this snapshot ruin the strategic importance. General Allen will tell us why it's important we get it right. If we leave, and it falls back into Taliban hands and al-Qaeda reemerges, we'll pay a heavy price. History will not judge us by the day we left, but by what we left behind. And General Allen has a plan for us to withdraw our troops. And the key to this is a strategic partnership agreement telling the Taliban, the Iranians, the Pakistanis will have a follow-on military force and the Taliban will never come back. What we do after 2014 and the way we do it determines our long-term security interests. Senator Blumenthal, same basic question to you. When Afghan troops, Afghan police are turning their weapons, not on the Taliban, but on U.S. soldiers, when you see leading conservatives saying it's time to go to the exits, is it time to get out of Afghanistan? We will be getting out of Af Afghanistan, hopefully with in, that strategic partnership. In two and a half years. On the timetable and with the strategy <laughs> that General Allen and the commanders and the troops there are following. So you but wouldn't speed up? I think if we can speed up and accelerate that withdrawal with the kind of strategic partnership that we are building and with special operators continuing to make the progress in taking out targets and turning over that function to the Afghans, that certainly is a goal to be pursued. But let's, let's remember, Chris, very importantly, three tremendous problems in Afghanistan. Economic weakness, safe havens, corruption in the government. Right. Beyond this incident, which is tragic, absolutely tragic for both sides, really, there is an important point here that we need to stick to this strategy and overcome this incident. Finally, now, finally I just, because we're running out of time, and I want to talk about one last trouble spot, and that is Syria and the slaughter of the opposition of uh, c civilians in Syria continues unabated. Uh, Senator Graham, what should the U.S. do? Should we start arming the, the opposition, and what do we do about Assad? I think the opposition needs military support. You could probably do it from the Arab League. Working with Senator Blumenthal, we're going to do a sense of the Senate resolution calling on the United Nations to uh, declare Assad a war criminal because he is. We need more international pressure. We need to help the uh, uh, the, the rebels militarily, economically, uh, and, and let Assad know that he's an international outlaw and be held accountable when you for say, his actions. Well, I, I missed what you said when you said arm him in a... In a the, I think the Arab League would be a good vehicle to provide military assistance to the opposition forces, and we should consider that. We should consider no drive, no fly zone to pretty quickly. So you're saying basically what we did in, in Libya? I think the Libyan model could serve us well. Senator Blumenthal? You know, Secretary Clinton is doing a very good job of bringing together the world community as well as the Arab League in support of some kind of aid to the opposition. And that aid can be technical assistance, communications equipment, humanitarian aid, financial support, and, if possible, arms that would go indirectly. There are means to do it. But it should be under the auspices of the international community, as Secretary Clinton is endeavoring to do. And this resolution, I think, will send a very important message. First of all, on Iran, on Israel, on Syria, we are bipartisan. Absolutely.
and bipartisanship is breaking out. As I saw in this great trip that we took with Senator McCain, there is very strong support for the kinds of initiatives that we saw in Libya. And Libya is a model for how we can aid rebels. But let me emphasize, Chris, no American troops, none, no American troops on the ground in direct aid that will bolster that opposition. Senator Blumenthal, Senator Graham, we're going to have to leave it there. I want to thank you both so much for coming in today, and we will see what comes out of that key Obama-Netanyahu meeting tomorrow. Thank you, gentlemen, Bob. Thank you.